Issue 60 and 61 of Stormbringer magazine, The Ill Guzzler Gargant. You won't be saying time, gentlemen, please, to this fella. Welcome to The Lucky Roll, an eclectic channel for eclectic games, and today we're going to be doing issue 60 and 61 of Heshek Collection's Age of Sigmar Stormbringer magazine. Now, we're doing two issues this time because it's a two-parter. The midi, if you can call him that because he's actually quite big, is the Ale Guzzler Gargant, and he comes in, to, he's spread over two issues, so he comes in two parts. Um, a very interesting mini, and we'll have a proper look at him there in a little bit. But uh, before that, we'll have a look at the actual lore and guide we get in the magazine itself. So we have here an introduction to the Cadron Overlords and the Sky Fleets, uh, basically, in that they are initially something that was formed to combat against the first incursions of chaos. But they became so good at it, they've actually become a major power in themselves. Um, you have different Arcanaut companies that would kind of band together and of course it's known as the perilous skies because even though that they're the dominant one they're still being challenged chaos still has a vested interest in uh, competing for the skies you have here the El guzzler gargant which is the mini and uh, quite an interesting one because all they do is they love drinking but whenever they have a battle if they win they'll drink if they lose they'll drink uh, they'll probably drink harder and if what they like to do when they're kind of sleeping off hangovers is they like to hide in caves and so very brave little grots will go up to them and kind of say um, if you want a little alliance we'll give you some extra drinks so this is how an awful lot of them can be kind of brought into battle with the forces of destruction you have here uh, just some kind of different aspects horrible quirks and disgusting tactics you have the techniques and how to build them now there's a lot of building in this one because there's actually you get, it's, it's a great sprue because you get an awful lot of different things you can attach to it, like say a cow or a, a bag full of people or a little cage or a Johan Strain, which is a kind of a little figure on his own. So there's a lot of versatility with this model. It's actually an ex a really fun model to make and build. Um, you have, of course, the actual paint guide, giving with kind of, kind of glazing with contrast paints. You have the battle plan, which is forged in war, winds of change. Uh, the Alliance of Order and Mustering for Battle. Now that was issue 60. Issue 61 oh, there's also comes with a an Armies of Ashki, which is kind of a, a pullout with the Realm of Fire, showing you what the actual realm is like. Some of the big, uh, I was going to say tourist spots, but uh, some of the more notable kind of locations. Um, the kind of different factions in it, the Signs of the Flame, the Hammerfall Ashka, and of course the Fire Slayers themselves, which would be the Dwarves. We have here issue 61, which again has some more information on the Realm of Fire, and it has a much more elaborate paint guide on the actual Ilguzler Gargant. Now I think Ilguzler Gargant is a good name for it because this guy has a really, really big beer gut. I mean a proper old beer gut. But uh, some interesting aspects here. You have some more aspect uh, order tactics and Thundrix profiteers, so basically how to use them a little bit better. You have the War Scroll on the Ale Guzzler, uh, War Scroll tutorials, and a new Flame and Fury battle pack and an impact event, which uh, helps you with the Alliance of Order and Destruction in using your new models. So let's have a look at the actual Ale Guzzler himself. Now, uh, again, this was a very fun build uh, because... His gut really sticks out. I mean, you can see, really see that he's a, a proper ale guzzler, that, that there is a proper beer belly on this guy, but that there's a lot of kind of fun little detail on it as well. I mean, one of the things I really liked here was the weapon, that it's a weapon with weapons inside it. So you have here an axe, you have a sword, a larger sword, and a bit of another axe. Um, there was other really cool weapons on the sprues, like, say, uh, a chain attached to a kind of a bit of building that you swing at things. He has here his nice little cage that he's going to capture poor old Johann Strayer here with. Uh, apparently there is a bit of lore about this guy in the sense that he's wanted for cowardice. So he's going to have a really fun little mini. But to be fair, in this case, if you were being chased by this big huge guy with a cage, I wouldn't run either. And it also gives you a kind of a tiny little pitchfork that you can leave behind that he's, 
he's dropped in his uh, effort to flee. Uh, the Gargant himself, again, there's a lot of accessories. Now, I just gave him a little beer barrel here because he that is he that is what he is. He's a, a nail guzzler. But you can have things like, say, a cow attached or kind of other little humans attached in a bag that you can kind of put onto it. So there's a great, lot of great versatility in these in these minis. Um, I got so interested that I started looking up some of the other little minis. And the only complaint is that the body is largely the same, that the legs are nearly always in the same position and you have a big, huge gut. But there's so many extra bits on the sprue that you can easily have three or four uh, different models from this kit. The only thing was that the legs would be the same, but the arms would be different, the head would be different, the torso would be different because you can adorn armor to it, and the sides would be different because you can kind of attach different things to it. So if um, if you're someone who wanted to kind of have an army of giants, this is most certainly issues that might be worth buying a couple of them, if you, especially if you want to feel this unit. But again, a really fun little model. I had a lot of fun doing it because it's just, it's just mad. The only thing I would say is, actually, I remember when I was building it, the there was no specific hand to hold the cage. I was trying to kind of um, copy the uh, the magazine here, where his hand is holding a specific cage, but there was no there was no part that allowed me to kind of do it properly. So I just kind of took the open hand and I glued it onto the cage. Uh, in a sense that I'm hoping that it would kind of get away with it. It's uh, just one small thing that if you're planning to build it uh, according to the front, like I am, to just be a little bit aware of that. But nevertheless, there's so many cool other little bits and pieces that you get in this that, um, again, if you're buying two or three, if you, if, you, if you want two or three versions of this, I'd say it would be worth your while getting two or three different sets of the magazine because you get a lot of really cool models for the, the same price and just to give you a size, sense of the scale this is one of the Cadron overlords next to it so he is a really really big boy as always this is sean from the lucky roll if you enjoy these videos please like subscribe all that good youtube stuff and until next time good luck god bless and uh, i think i'm going to go away and have a pint with this fella